up from the bay on full takeoff power. Flaps up and engines back to cruising speed for a single circuit. On course for New Zealand at 637. with the big land planes that fly the red ribbon route from Sydney to London. Halfway across the world in four days. First hop, Sydney to Darwin, eight hours. 2,000 miles across Australia. A circuit over the city, and in minutes, the aircraft top the Great Dividing Range. The coastal barrier that pinned the early settlers to the sea and held back the first explorers from the rolling plains beyond, the rich sheep and wheat country of the fertile inland. Past Simpson's Desert, that separates the people of the north from the people of the south, four miles every minute straight across the sand dunes where man has never trod. Over the beats of the camel teamsters and the tribal lands of the Aborigines, a thousand miles from the coast. On over the outback, the homesteads and scattered settlements where people are separated by vast distances and natural barriers that defy transport by land. miles right across Australia until the aircraft circles Darwin on the Timor Sea. The big overseas aircraft link Australia with the distant world. Singapore, Karachi, Cairo, Rome and London. Fiji, Honolulu, San Francisco and Vancouver. New Zealand. Hong Kong, the Philippines, Japan. Within the country, a network of main air routes and bush feeder lines connects the cities and many of the country towns and reaches out to New Guinea, Lord Howe Island and Norfolk Island. Even a tiny town like Turawina in northern New South Wales has a daily airliner direct to Sydney. This town of 250 people is a junction for the feeder service by small plane to the whole of the surrounding area. Well, passengers who have just arrived from Sydney and are proceeding by the feeder service to Canamble, Walgett, Brewarrina, Burke, Gooduga and St George, please board aircraft AAO on the left-hand side of the waiting room. The country people accept the plane as a matter of course. In it, they find the answer to their isolation. Now, with the aeroplane, men can live and work in the most inaccessible parts of the country. The asbestos miners of the Wittenoom Gorge in outback Western Australia are 200 miles from the nearest town and 500 miles from the railhead. But by the twice weekly mail plane, they can be in their capital city, Perth, almost a thousand miles away in eight hours. <laughs> In the Northern Territory, where single cattle stations are as big as some European countries, the bush flyers call on regular schedules at the homesteads, missions and mines. Most homesteads have their own airstrips and the plane lands right at the door. A cup of tea for the pilot, who's almost one of the family. Besides the mail, he has brought the groceries from Alice Springs. 
and the radio that he took in last trip to be repaired. Mail every two weeks, where before it came to some stations only twice a year. One of the great problems of the people of the outback is sudden sickness or accident. Before the plane came into medical work, many lives were lost in long overland treks. At Bathurst Island Mission, a boy has concussion and a broken arm. Once he would have had to make an overnight crossing by the weekly lugger. Now he'll be in hospital in Darwin within an hour. The area ambulance and flying doctor bring expert medical attention within two or three hours of every person in the Commonwealth. It may be a fall from a horse, sometimes a sick baby, or an accident in a mine. At Kalgara, out from Alice Springs, it's a stockman with a broken leg, a common thing on cattle stations during the muster. US from 8VR, US from 8VR, I have an urgent medical, I have an urgent medical for you. One of the stockmen has... The pedal radio message goes straight to the nearest flying doctor base. If the case is urgent, it is only minutes before the doctor is in the air. Over. All right, I will come down straight away. Over. In a country like Australia, the plane has endless uses. It has been used for bushfire spotting, locating schools of fish, finding lost travellers or ships at sea. It has even gone to the farm, helping to fertilise the land and sow the seed and dust the crop. airliners of the intercity routes have made passenger carrying a major industry. Attention! Will all passengers on Skymaster service to Sydney and Brisbane please board the aircraft in front of the lounge? From Adelaide and Melbourne, Brisbane and Sydney with speed and economy, regularity and safety, they move back and forth across the country carrying one and a half million people a year, more than a sixth of the total population. The two largest companies between them fly 25 million miles a year two of the largest internal operating companies in the world, carrying passengers at the world's lowest fare. With this tremendous achievement goes the task of providing airstrips and ground facilities. Mobile construction units of the Department of Civil Aviation are continually at work, laying down new strips and maintaining the old. All airstrips are owned or licensed by the department, and its maintenance crews have the responsibility of seeing that navigational aids are in operation at all times. Airport beacons for night flying radio beacons for blind flying, identification numbers showing the bearing of the runways, electric flare paths and all the other requirements for safe flying. Weather conditions in Australia are probably the best in the world for aviation, but an efficient meteorological service is still one of the main factors in safe and comfortable flying. Throughout the mainland and in the surrounding islands, an intricate system of reporting points has been established. From hundreds of airfields and weather stations, constant information flows to the main city terminals.
Nationwide weather reports are made out every three hours. And from these overall reports, individual forecasts are supplied for every flight leaving the aerodrome. The pilots plan their flight on the information contained in the weather report, plotting their route and height to obtain the best flying conditions. Before any plane can leave the main terminals, the pilot's flight plan showing every detail of the proposed journey must be approved by the Civil Aviation Control Section at the departure point. Uh, wind on the climb is 15014. 150. Uh, track of 345. Uh, true airspeed of 140. We're on uh, 345 at 140. Gives you a, a course of uh, 348, ground speed of 153. 023, 187. 7,000 feet clear? Yes, 7,000 feet altitude at 1205, 330 gallons suitable? Yes, Norm. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Norm. See you later. There, Tower. Back clear, got it. Able now and love is cleared for Brisbane, 7,000 feet, 1205. Roger, the tower control operator handles all movement on the ground and all movement in the air in the vicinity of the airport. His instructions are given in the international code that is used in aircraft radio work. And the aircraft registration letters are used for all identification. VHAOI is Able Obo Item. Able Obo Item, off at 11.57. Roger. As soon as an aircraft takes off, the tower notifies the control section of its departure time. The departure time and all relevant details of the flight plan are radioed and teletyped to the destination and to the reporting points along the route which the aircraft will follow. On the flight progress boards at the arrival and departure points, operators plot the movements of the aircraft through every stage of its journey. As each plane takes off, an operator enters on blocks the details of its flight plan, route, speed, height, time due over reporting points, and so on. He makes out a block for each reporting point. The board operators then have before them a constant picture of all movement in their areas. Flying its guided course along the radio range, the aircraft regularly reports its position over established reporting points. This information is checked against the time shown on the board. If it differs by more than three minutes, the pilot is asked for a double check on his position. Once he takes off, and unless an emergency decision is necessary to ensure the immediate safety of his aircraft, a pilot cannot alter any detail of his flight plan without the express permission of the chief control officer at the nearest terminal. Sydney Air Radio from Easy Able Mike. Sydney Air Radio from Easy Able Mike. Now we're in cloud in bad conditions at 7,000 feet. Could we change to 9,000 and fly on top, over? Flight check. Easy Able Mike is in cloud in bad conditions at 7,000 feet and wants permission to change altitude to 9,000. Could you give me a ruling on this? Roger. Is it clear for Easy Able Mike to change to uh, 9,000 feet? Able Mike. Seven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're clear there. You're closing right. You're right. Easy Able Mike. Clear to nine. Radio, Easy Able Mike, clear to change to 9,000 feet. Clear to 9,000, thank you and out from Easy Able Mike. The strict supervision of aircraft movement applies equally to aircraft on the ground. No plane can taxi or take off without first obtaining permission from the tower operator. Mascot Tower from Tower Able Baker. Are we clear to line up now? Over. Tower Able Baker, this is Mascot Tower. Now you're clear to line up and stand by. Over. Roger Tower from Tower Able Baker. Will you give me a radio check, please? How are you reading me? Over. Tower Able Baker, I'm reading you five by five. Over. 
Thank you, Tower, from Terra Abel Baker. Are we clear for takeoff? Over. Terra Abel Baker, this is Mascot Tower. Roger, you're clear for takeoff. Will you do a right hand turn on a diversion? Over. Roger, Tower, from Terra Abel Baker. Thank you, and out. Baker off at 12.26. Mascot Tower from Butler's Able Obo Howe. Taxi instructions, please. Over. Able Obo Howe. This is Mascot Tower. Roger, you're clear to taxi. Runway 04. Altimeter setting is 2990. Over. Tower from Able Obo Howe. Roger. Is it all right to taxi on the grass? Over. Abel Obo Howe, Roger. You may use the grass, over. Roger, Tower, from Abel Obo Howe. In the normal course of civil flying, an emergency is rare, but sometimes one arises. All twin-engine aircraft must be able to fly on one engine, but the failure of a motor gives an aircraft operational priority. Mascot Tower from Abel Sugar Dog. We are five minutes out and we've had engine trouble. We've feathered our starboard motor. Request priority landing, over. Able Sugar Dog, this is Mascot Tower, Roger. You're number one to land. Wind from the north northeast at eight. Altimeter setting 2990. Runway 04. Call on base leg, over. Roger, Tower, from Able Sugar Dog. Able Obo Howe, this is Mascot Tower. Hold your position and do not approach any closer to the runway, over. Tower from Able Obo Howe. Am I all right in this position? Over. Able Obo Howe, Roger. Your position there is okay. Up. Able Sugar Dog, I'll stand the fire tender by for you, over. Uh, fire tender, this is the tower. Uh, Able Sugar Dog is landing on one motor, runway 04. A uh, flight check, Able Sugar Dog's making a one engine landing on runway 4. Uh, he lost a motor five minutes out. I'm bringing him in on a priority landing. Roger, tower. Any problems? Uh, no, it's just a routine one engine descent. He's on short final now. Able Sugar Dog down at 12.32. Able Obo Howe, this is the tower. Hold your present position. There's another three on final. Over. Roger, tower from Able Obo Howe. Oh, stone that grows. Tower from Easy Able Mike. Wheels down and locked. Over. Easy Able Mike, Roger. Expedite your taxi. I have traffic waiting for takeoff. Over. Roger, Dodger from Easy Able Mike. Thank you. And cheerio. Able Obo Howe, you're clear to enter the strip and taxi down for takeoff, control 24 hours a day over every stage of flight. Supervision that means safety. The day's flying done and the aircraft goes into the hangar for a complete checkover. For safety control does not end with the actual flying. The silver machines are kept as mechanically perfect as sure minds and clever hands can make them. Regularly, they're stripped down for a complete overhaul. Each single part, from the air screws to the tail fins, is individually examined. Aircraft surveyors of the Department of Civil Aviation check the full overhaul and issue the machine with a certificate of airworthiness that sends it back to flying. The instruments are put through tests more exacting than anything they'll meet in the air. When the aircraft is assembled again, it's as good as brand new. Pilots, too, are continually keeping up to date, mastering the use of new equipment. A pilot never finishes his training, but the development of new instruments and flying technique changes his job from day to day. And to keep in line with modern developments, 
designers of the Department of Civil Aviation are continually improving existing aerodromes and building new ones. Plans for the new air terminals are as modern as the great new aircraft that will use them. New ground is broken. Rivers are filled in to make runways for the aircraft of the future. Move up then from the land and put the roadways in the sky. Shatter with the roar of engines the menace of distance. Fly over the tops of the mountains and make neighbors out of strangers. Bind together the scattered segments of this huge country. No longer do natural barriers divide the drover of the Kimberleys from the orchardist of Tasmania or the cane cutter of Queensland from the axemen of Victoria. The steel worker of Newcastle and the shipwright of Wyala know the gold miner of Kalgoorlie. And all the far-flung people of the continent are within a few hours of the cities of the coast. There are no distant places anymore. Just as the aircraft has brought the people of Australia closer together, so too it has brought them closer to the people of countries overseas. Each year new international operators are adding new routes to the network that links us with the world. Adding their routes to the existing routes flown by Australian airmen. I name this aircraft the Empress of Sydney and wish all who travel in her Godspeed. Where the sailing ships once took six months, the aircraft takes four days. Attention please. The Qantas constellation Lawrence Hargrave from London, Rome, Cairo, Karachi, Singapore and Darwin is now taxiing to the international terminal. Will all passengers please proceed through the customs section which is situated at the far end of the terminal building. Our Australian international aircraft operate between Britain, Australia and Canada, flying the greater part of the all red route that circles the globe. The British Commonwealth Pacific Airlines DC-6 Discovery for Fiji, Canton Island, Honolulu, San Francisco and Vancouver is now ready for departure. All aboard please. and modern Australia have grown up together and they are going forward together. The aircraft has become the servant of the people, uniting the citizens of this country, uniting the countries of the world.